Hi friends, welcome back to my channel or hello if you are new. I am so excited for today's video. We are finally sharing our master bedroom makeover reveal. This has been a project in the works for about a month now. So I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step what we did, how I designed it, where I sourced everything and show you guys a super calm and moodier colored bedroom. When we moved into the house, we left the walls just a plain white. We brought in all of our old furniture from our previous homes. It was just a room that I didn't put a whole lot of thought in design wise, but I knew that I wanted to tackle that project eventually. So since it's winter time and all of our outside projects haven't quite started yet, we decided to tackle this project before our sweet baby girl makes her arrival at the end of May. Since I'm going to be spending a lot more time in our bedroom, I wanted to make it super functional for the baby and myself just to make that transition a little bit smoother. So I'm going to show you guys the overall view of the room and then I will break down each little nook and cranny. I'll share paint colors and how we did the projects. I'll also try to link everything that I can down below so be sure to check out the description box. Those are always affiliate links and they help me out so much whenever you click on them. Thank you guys for always checking those out. And don't forget to subscribe. I have tons of spring decorating content planned. I've been getting so inspired lately. So this room is a little nod to spring as well, but I'm so excited to show you. So without further ado, let's see the bedroom makeover. Mm -hmm. off the entire project we started by figuring out what wall feature we wanted to bring into this bedroom and I tossed around a few things at first I thought about doing just an accent wall I also thought about doing some beadboard I threw around wallpaper and at the end of the day we settled on doing some board and batten all the way around the room in a creamy taupe color. So that was project number one. We already had our walls painted Sherwin-Williams alabaster, so we just left that for the top of the room, and we started our board and batten about a little under six feet tall. That's the very top board. One night we went and got all of the materials, and the next night he started on the project, and it took him about two full days to complete it. And I wrote down the measurements of the size of boards that we use so I could tell you guys. So the vertical pieces like this are one by threes. And then the top piece is a one by six piece. And the very top is a one by two. And like I said, we measured just under six feet, mainly because we have some electrical outlets behind this picture that I wanted to go above that. I didn't have to worry about covering those or like making specific cuts for them. And then the spacing between each board is about 22 inches wide. That's how we did our board and batten. It was super simple. Taylor brought his saw out into the garage so he was able to go back and forth really easily. We painted the whole section of the wall first that we would be putting the board and batten on. We added the one by six, he painted that, and then we added these pieces on top and he painted those when they were all up on the walls already. And then the next day he added the trim piece once everything was dry and he did paint those, this piece, out in the garage. That way it was a little bit easier. He wouldn't have to like tape off the top part of the wall. This made the whole process a little bit smoother. For the color of the board and batten, we used Sherwin-Williams Revere Pewter. Now all of our paint we actually get from Home Depot. I love the Bear brand. They have a really good high quality paint that's really affordable and they can color match to Sherwin-Williams. So that's what I did. I used it was the purple can. I think it's the eggshell finish. So that's what we always use for paint. We did keep all of our trim paint pure white 
and that's more of a glossy finish um, and we kept that at the bottom of the room that trim piece and around our windows for our sliding doors going into our master bathroom we did leave those the color that they are they are sherwin williams iron ore and that was pretty well the big bulk of the project that's what took the most time now let's get into the design because that's where my job kind of came in and i did a ton of planning i have been planning this room for months and months i started a pinterest board which i recommend doing just so you kind of know your style see what kind of color palettes you like also see what kind of bedding you are drawn to so to start the whole project out i made a mood board and i used a program called pick monkey that's what i make all of my youtube thumbnails with and i'm used to it you could also use free apps like canva i know that that's really popular as well but start going online and either pinning things that you like or finding different things on different websites. Like I would find a bed frame I liked on Wayfair and a rug from Amazon, and I would mash it all together and create a mock room using PicMonkey. That way I could kind of see what it was gonna look like once everything was there. And I'll show you my little picture of what I came up with that was my inspiration for this room. So I knew that I wanted to bring in more moodier colors but also still keep it light and airy i also wanted to bring in lots of pattern that's something that i've been drawn to and mixing patterns i love plaids and gingham so that's what i wanted to bring in to bring in some faux floral stems but also maybe some florals in the rug and so that really helped me get my thoughts straight whenever i was shopping online or shopping in the stores i could always go back to that mood board get a feel for the direction that i was wanting to go first things first we sold our existing headboard and bed frame on facebook i just posted it on facebook and someone commented a few hours later and they picked it up a few days later and so we were stuck sleeping on a mattress on the ground until our new headboard came in but i found this really beautiful one on wayfair it was a really good price came in lots of different colors and i loved the texture that it had on it it's a really soft corduroy material it's a lower profile bed i wanted something that whenever i was postpartum and getting up with the baby constantly where it was a little lower to the ground so it was easier to get in and out of our last bed was really high off the ground the kids had a hard time getting into it lower bed would be useful and where our fireplace is in our master bedroom you'd be able to see that a little bit better if the bed was a little lower so i knew i wanted a lower platform style bed i also wanted something that was a little more timeless a little more transitional style that will evolve with us i went with a cream color they also had a taupe color that looked beautiful if you wanted to go for that so like i said i will link everything down below that i mentioned i started with picking out the headboard and that took weeks literally weeks to find the perfect one and i am really happy with how it turned out taylor and brooks worked on it they put it together it came in super fast i want to say it was like three or four days which i feel like is really good for a big purchase like that and it's it was very sturdy easy to put together and seemed like really good quality especially for the price so love our headboard the next thing that i focused on was a rug for our room now i knew i wanted a washable rug and i knew i wanted it to be oversized so we have a king size bed and it was recommended to use a 9 by 12 rug underneath the bed i went on amazon and wayfair and just looked all over the internet for washable rugs that were in more of a moodier darker color scheme and i found one from laloy and it was a collab with magnolia home and it is the most beautiful rich toned rug i love it it is so soft i don't know how i would wash it to be honest but i'm thinking as long as it is washable it will be easier to clean um, but it's a 9 by 12 rug and it is thicker than any of my other washable rugs so i don't know how i would wash it i probably wouldn't put it in my washing machine 
unless I took it to like a dry cleaner or something. I don't know. Anyways, love that rug. That is what tied in the whole room, I feel like. The rug and the headboard really make a huge difference. Next, I picked out nightstands and I had found these really neat chest drawers at an estate sale last year and I had already painted one a matte black. I actually just used the paint from Walmart. I believe the brand is Waverly and I just used the black color, painted those. I used a roller and a brush to create a smooth finish. I sealed it. It's a type of polyurethane and painted those. I also added new hardware. I kept the three little knobs at the top. Those came original with the piece, but I did cut pulls for the drawers. And then I just used some rub and buff and antique gold on the top three knobs to match those pulls. And you guys, the brass on the black just pops. I feel like it looks so good against the taupe wall. And also these aren't technically nightstands, but I think I paid $70 for each of them. When I went to the estate sale originally, I had bought one and my mom bought the other. She ended up not using hers, so I was able to get that one. So I had a matching set and I love them. They are so large and spacious. They hold so much. I actually don't even have very much in it because I keep my nightstand things pretty minimal, but I love to have an array of books. I think it's gonna be really helpful postpartum too. Nighttime feeding things in there, or like any baby essentials. There are two large drawers that will be right beside our bed that will be so wonderful. And like I said, in those early newborn weeks. Don't be afraid to do oversized nightstands, even with a platform bed. I feel like it really worked out well for us. The lamps on top of the nightstands I found on Facebook Marketplace, the actual lamps themselves. They were a cream color and I DIY'd them to be more of a worn, old world brown color. They look very aged. I love them. And then I found the lampshades from Goodwill. They were actually on other lamps, but they were $10 each for the lamp and the lampshade. And they're a very large size, so I grabbed those. And then I keep our nightstands pretty minimal whenever I'm styling them. On my side, I just keep a coaster because I always have water at night. And then I also have my Bible on my side. And then Taylor is more minimal. He doesn't really keep anything out other than his chargers. So keep his bone charger kind of tucked behind the nightstand. Okay, moving on to bedding. I had a mix of old and new things that I brought in for our bedding. First up, I found this beautiful gingham comforter set at Target a few weeks ago. They were running a sale that was 20% off and I found this set where it came with this really beautiful beige neutral colored gingham comforter that's really plush and thick and it also came with two pillow shams as well to match. So that is what inspired the whole project. I also already had a taupe quilt on hand so I laid that down. I had some cream sheets on the bed. I kept those. I would like to look for floral sheets though. I think that would really pop against all the patterns and go really well with it. But I already had some taupe colored Euro size pillows. So what I do for our bedding is I keep mine and Taylor's like personal pillows, pillows we actually like sleep on at the very back to kind of hide them because I like a silk pillowcase. Taylor doesn't, they don't match. They're more of a foam style pillow. So they're not like big and fluffy, they're more structured. What I do is I will place those in the very back. Then I have three Euro size pillows I put in front of them. Then I lay the pillow shams that are the gingham color in front of those. And then I wanted to have fun with some additional pillows because you can never have too many. And I ordered this black floral print from Amazon. It was just a pillow cover. I put it over a pillow I already had. And that brought in the black color with the nightstands. Then I also ordered a linen brown pillow cover from Amazon. This one is my favorite. That ties in with the lamps on either side of the nightstands. And then I also already had a plaid pillow that kind of pulled in the brown color as well. It's a different plaid than the gingham 
print so I feel like it complements it well. I also already had this green blanket that is just really cozy. We love sleeping with this and it ties in well with the green dresser that we brought in. So that is what we did for the bedding. Then at the end of the bed, I found this beautiful wicker chest or trunk from Home Goods. It was, I think, $70, but it's a huge size. It is massive. It didn't even fit in the cart in the store. So I was so excited to find that. And I've been storing all of our extra pillows in there at night um, that we don't use. That way they're not just thrown all over the floor and it's worked out really, really nice. And I feel like it also adds a nice element of texture at the end of the bed as well. Okay, moving on to the fireplace mantle. We didn't do anything too crazy over here or different. I did get this really neat canvas banner on Etsy last year. It was last spring early summer and it has 2 Corinthians 4 16 through 18 on it and it's just a really good reminder I wanted to keep that up because I love that above the fireplace and just the overall look of that with the windows I feel like it fits the space really well um, it is more of a just like neutral color and then our fireplace we kept white I almost painted it but I decided to keep it white to kind of match the trim around the windows I kept the fireplace mantle very simple I just added a vase that I picked up from Hobby Lobby on clearance and added some white cosmos love those I feel like that just nods to spring and is getting me so inspired I also love the way the white flowers pop against the taupe board and batten then I have a little clock next to it that I need to get batteries for haven't done that yet and then on the other side I have a little landscape picture I think that was like five dollars on clearance at Hobby Lobby I have an old book a little candle from Target it smells so good and then I picked up this picture frame that was on clearance at home goods for six dollars the gold with that frame ties in with the nightstands hardware and the hardware on the green dresser above the bed i added a gallery wall of some pictures we had taken last fall here on our property i love the colors of them and i found the set of three gold frames from home goods on clearance for 24 dollars and then i just printed out the pictures at walgreens and was able to pick them up in a few hours so that worked out really well that was very simple to do but again I feel like it ties in with the brass gold hardware on the nightstands and dresser I also wanted to create a little cozy nook for the baby somewhere that we could rock her and feed her in our bedroom so we had this swivel chair already it's this beautiful creamy linen color I love it it swivels side to side unfortunately it doesn't rock which I'm actually looking for a glider to use to switch out with that chair I just haven't found the right one yet um, and I also don't want to spend a ton on it so I'm still on the lookout for that but for now this chair works just fine and if we have to use that one where it kind of sways side to side then that will be totally fine and then I did find this little end table at home goods I love the wood color of it and the shape it's a really good size for this little corner and it allows me somewhere to keep right now my books and I also have a little coaster there to set my coffee on in the mornings whenever I'm doing my Bible reading I also added a candle there I need to actually start lighting my candles at night I'm gonna make that my goal this year now that our room is done to actually light candles the time they are just for looks or I like the little flameless candles too and then tucked in the corner I have a faux tree I did get this one from Target it's the hearth and hand line one and I love it. I, I don't remember what it was called, but it came in this really beautiful pot. I feel like that definitely makes the whole space come together. To wrap it all up, we have this wall over here, and this is a space that was specifically for the baby. I did find a dresser on Facebook Marketplace, and I paid, I think, $75 for this one. It was a really dark wood color, a little bit orangey, and I decided to paint it green. It's Fusion Mineral Paint in the color Everett, and oh my goodness, I love Fusion Mineral Paint. If you've never used it before, it is so 
wonderful for furniture specifically because you don't have to sand you don't have to prep all I did was wipe it down with some crud cutter I like that spray to really get all the grease and grime off of the piece before I start painting but that's it I don't do any sanding I did not sand it at all and you also don't have to finish it the top coat is in the paint already a fusion mineral paint I get it at a local antique store there's a booth in there that sells it but I'm sure you could probably order it online as well but like I said this is a color Everett I looked for dressers online for probably a solid month and I could not find any that I loved nothing really was the size that I liked and they were also very very expensive the ones that I was drawn to were around $1,300 and I just did not want to spend that on one dresser. I found a solid wood dresser on Facebook Marketplace. I made sure it was a smoke-free home so it didn't have a weird smell to it. And Taylor went and picked it up, brought it home. I put two coats of that Fusion Mineral Paint on it and that is it. I also added the same hardware from Amazon that I used on our nightstand. This is the moody color scheme that I was going for and I love it. I love the shade of green. So then, like I said earlier, we do have some electrical outlets behind this picture frame. So I needed something to cover them without having to paint them or I don't know what I was gonna do. I thought about doing a gallery wall with different size picture frames. I really wanted a bigger piece of art so I found this one at Home Goods and I just loved the green. I loved the look of this. This was exactly what I was going for. It's trimmed in like a walnut brown. So pretty. So we hung that up intentionally below the board and batten that way it would cover up those outlets. And then I have thought about adding a hook on this board here to either hang like burnt cloths or swaddles or I just have somewhere to like hang it up once the baby is here. So I might do that, I might not. On top of the dresser, I just have a vase that I DIY'd with some paint mixed with baking soda. I did that a few years ago probably. And then I have some stems from Target inside of it. And then on the other side, I have a few books that I've been loving lately. The first one I just got in a few days ago and I've been reading it like every night. It's so relaxing and it's getting me so inspired for spring. Um, this is Growing Seasons by Kristen Johns and it's beautiful for one. She also is an amazing storyteller and she has different recipes and home DIYs and ideas in here for all the different seasons. She does a different section for each month of the year. And then I also have a devotional called Miracle in the Making. I've been loving this throughout my pregnancy this time. So I have those here on the nightstand. And then I also have a little gold jewelry holder to take like my rings, my necklace, my earrings off at the end of the day. And they always have a place. So I keep that on the dresser. But my plan for this dresser is to put a changing mat on it that way i will be able to change braylee over here get her dressed and why i even wanted a dresser for our bedroom was so that i could put all of her clothes and essentials in here while she's in our room she'll probably stay in our room sleeping in a bassinet for the first six months that's what we've done with our other kids and it's worked out really well so i'm going to put all of her sleepers swaddles diapers wipes like everything that she needs in this dresser and it'll just be already in our room. I won't have to run back and forth. The last area is this big floor mirror. And then I have a floor basket with some pompous grass. I got the basket at an antique shop and then all of the pompous grass I used for Breland's first birthday party last year and just kept all of them. I think I ordered those on Amazon. I also do keep a little fan over here on a stool because we don't have a ceiling fan. We intentionally didn't put one in our room. So we like to have a little fan at night. That is it for the bedroom. 
I hope you enjoyed getting to hear my thought process behind it and breaking down all of the design plans. Let me know if you have any projects coming up. Our next projects before the baby comes is working on outside things. So I'm so excited to do landscaping with you guys. We're pouring lots of concrete. We'll get started on the garden soon. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any videos. I do post every Tuesday and Thursday afternoon and I would love to have you stick around. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye friends. Mm -hmm.